Quintessa, the prime of life. Welcome back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another episode of Fixing Transformers. And in today's we're going to take a look at if Quintessa is the creator of the Transformers. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So the Transformers community is conflicted when asked if Quintessa is the creator of the Transformers. She has the powers of a god being able to mind control others to do her bidding, while on the contrary she's called the Great Deceiver, and calls herself the Primal Life. While when Optimus was killed, the Fallen said that the last Prime was dead. And that is far from all the contradictions if she's the creator or not. Since Age of Extinction brought up the idea of multiple creators, when Lockdown said the creators want a Prime back. But when we take a look at The Last Knight, Quintessa is the only creator. So with that said, the movie's made a mess when diving into the topic of a creator. So today I'm gonna iron out all these inconsistencies into a hopefully straightforward answer to give it a fair of explanation on who the creator is. And the first step to answering that, we need to know who and what Quintessa is. Quintessa was introduced to us in Transformers The Last Knight, and is the Bayverse interpretation of a Quintesson. She claimed to be Optimus Prime's creator and the Prime of Life. Those two details will come into play later. In the film, she was shown to have godlike powers, such as mind control, psychic powers, the ability to shoot out lightning, creating armies out of thin air, and being able to shapeshift into a human. But most importantly, having in-depth knowledge about Unicron, which Optimus Prime knew existed, but didn't know he was Earth. But as I said earlier, she's called the Great Deceiver by her 12 Guardian Knights. So how much about her is really true? And while to answer this, I believe that she is a creator, but not the only one, who went rogue to carry out her ruthless, genocidal, psychopathic delusions of being a goddess. And here's why I believe this to be true. The first thing I have to prove to you guys is why she is a creator. One evidence sign that points to this is her abilities. For example, sensing Vivian when she found her staff, knowing when Optimus was coming to see her, being able to shapeshift along a fly, being able to shoot out lightning like Emperor Palpatine, and for staff, being able to make anything. Now you could say that she is just a very powerful being, not connected to the creators of the Transformers, who pretend to be involved with them, but here's where I have to disagree. As you know, she knew about Unicron being the Earth. No other Transformer besides Megatron knew this, where he learned it from Quintessa, along with Nitro who learned it from Megs. The place you call Earth has another name. Unicron. Earth. Unicron. <clears throat> Cybertron's ancient enemy. This planet is hell. You blew your chance to kill Unicron! Another reason why she is a creator is because she single-handedly was able to fix Cybertron and bring life back to it. As we saw in Dark of the Moon, Cybertron's original size was huge, around three times the size of the Earth. Once the control pillar was destroyed, it got sucked back into the wormhole, collapsing in on itself, destroying the planet. But when we take a look at the last night, Cybertron is just a little bit bigger than the moon. And since we know that Quintessa was the only one on Cybertron during that time, we can conclude that she fixed the planet with the remaining parts and pieces from the destroyed Cybertron, to form Cybertron 2. And the most amazing part about this is that she didn't use her staff. Since if you remember, her staff was stolen from her by her 12 Guardian Knights. And the Knights arrived on Earth around 484 AD. And in the live action movie timeline, Dark of the Moon is set in 2013, with The Last Knight taking place no later than 2022. With that said, Quintessa would have around a nine year window to fix Cybertron into her own image, taking her longer to pull off without her staff of power. But nevertheless, that's pretty impressive. And remember how I said that she brought life back to Cybertron? Well, if we look carefully, we can see vegetation in the form of grass growing all over it, along with some dirt as well. And sadly, since the Bayformers are now discontinued, we're never going to see what Cybertron 2 would have fully looked like in Rise of Unicron. Now, you may be thinking, how does rebuilding Cybertron prove that Quintessa is a creator? Well, if you remember, in Age of Extinction, we learned that the creators use seeds to cyberform thousands of planets and use that metal to make the Transformers. Thousands of planets were cyberformed with seeds. They turned your organic life into our elemental metals. Our creators destroyed your world. To make us. With that said, we can conclude that Transformia was not only used to build Transformers, but also to build Cybertron. Hence why thousands of plans were needed to create Cybertron. So with that in mind, for someone to rebuild Cybertron, they would need the knowledge on how it was constructed. And with her having that information, proven by the fact that she was able to Frankenstein it back together, it points to the fact that she is a creator. Another reason why she is a creator is because she has the ability to heal Transformers. For example, when Prime first confronted Quintessa, he was still battle damaged from his fight with Lockdown, evident because he still has a stab marking in his chest. But in a later scene of Quintessa, Prime is all fixed, concluding Quintessa being the only reason why Prime was fixed. To further push this point, she turned Galvatron back into Megatron. And to learn more about that, check out my What Happened to Galvatron video to learn more. With that said, 
Only a being that has insight on how Transformers were made can also be able to fix them. And keep in mind, Quintessa was able to heal both of them without her staff, and I'll cover what the staff does in a bit. But now let's move on to who are the other creators. Now you may be thinking they were the alien hand looking things, but here's where I have to disagree. According to Prime, the creators cyberformed thousands of planets. And to pull this off, the creators would need millions of ships and billions of seeds. Now why would the creators themselves go out of way to do this monstrous task? when they could easily create henchmen and do the job for them while they oversaw how the project was going. With that in mind, we can rule out the alien hand creatures as being the creators. So what did the other creators look like? Well based upon what Quintessa looks like, we can infer that the other creators look similar to her, small alien-like beings with immense power. As for what species they are, thanks to concept art from the last night, we now know that they are the Bavers' versions of Quintessons. Now before I move on to what happened to the other creators, I want to clear up some confusion with the Allspark and how it connects to the creators. As we know, the Allspark has no proper origin, being created before time. Now though the Quintessons could have created the Allspark, I think it's highly unlikely, since the Allspark has the power to create worlds and fill them with life. With that said, there'd be no reason to create all that Transformium to build Cybertron and early Transformers, since the Allspark could do it all for them. I think the creators found the Allspark sometime after the completion of Cybertron, and used it to grant life to the early Cybertronians, which included the original Seven Primes. Hence why most of the Transformers that we see throughout the five films have some sort of Cybertronian marking on them. They knew it was alien because of the matching hieroglyphics on the cube as well as MB1. And I'll be going into more detail about this in my Protoform Misconceptions video. But now the last question about the Allspark would be, why would the creators leave it on Cybertron? Now there could be many reasons for this. As in many other continuities, the Transformers revolted against their creators, driving them from the planet. But since that's never mentioned in Bavers lore, I'm going to say that outcome did not happen. But the most likely one being that the creators left it on Cybertron. And here's why. After harnessing the Allspark's power, the creators would make many objects that imitate its power. For example, the Staff of Power is like a miniature Allspark. As Quintessa states, the Staff is her power of creation. My power of creation. The Staff. The Staff is the only way to bring life back to Cybertron. And according to what we heard, it can also heal Cybertron, which sounds a lot like the Allspark. With that in mind, the creators most likely made many artifacts that imitated what the Allspark could do, leaving the Allspark useless to them, since they had multiple miniature versions of it. Hence why they would leave it to the Cybertronians. Now if the Allspark squared off, let's move back on to what happened to the other creators. And there's no concrete answer to this whatsoever, leaving me to speculate on what happened to them. My best guess would be that Quintessa wanted to take control of Cybertron for herself, along with killing Unicron, an agent being that terrorized Cybertron once in the past, until getting defeated by the early Cybertronians, sensing that Unicron would eventually strike again, along with her lust for power, Quintessa would go rogue and rebel against her fellow creators, and of her being the strongest of the creators, along with having the Staff of Power, created the first Cybertronian Knights to kill the other creators. Now the reason why I'm being very broad here is because I'm going to flush out this storyline in my Who Sent Lockdown video, since I think the creators made Lockdown to counter Quintessa's Knights, hence why he was able to capture them all, along with Knights' misconceptions that's going to flush out all the 12 Guardian Knights, so stay tuned for when those drop. So with all that information in mind, I hope it shifts your guys' perspective that she is a creator, but not the only one. But now Let's take a look at the opposition and see why she's called the Great Deceiver. Now this line, the Great Deceiver, was said by a Guardian Knight upon realizing that Optimus aided Quintessa. So how much about Quintessa isn't true? Well the first thing I can point out is that she's not a Prime, if we interpret her saying Prime as in Cybertronian leader. Since when Optimus was killed, the Fallen said that the last Prime was dead. And you could make the argument that Sentinel was not technically dead on the Ark, but he was basically dead in the fact that without the Matrix replenishing his Energon, Sentinel Prime would have never woken up from his moon vacation. Another reason why Quintessa is not a Prime is because, for starters, she doesn't look like a Prime, and she's definitely not a Transformer. And if you recall, the Fallen sense when all the Primes were dead. And I highly doubt Quintessa would have been dead during 2009, since roughly around four years later, she starts to reconstruct Cybertron. So that in mind, she's definitely lying about being a Prime. But if we interpret the meaning of Prime into something else, other than a Cybertronian leader, then she may be telling the truth. Since what if she was the rank of Prime among the other Quintessons, with her being the strongest of the bunch, and possibly their leader? This would line up with her claim, being the Prime of Life since her artifact is a staff of creation, which is used for life. And since she's the prime among the group, she combined all this into a short title, The Prime of Life. So that said, depending on the interpretation of the way she uses Prime, it could go either way. But the reason why she's viewed as the Great Deceiver by her 12 Guardian Knights is because the Knights found out something that she lied to them about, something they believed in their whole lives. And I'll be expanding upon this lie in my Knights Misconceptions video. And just like that, that was Quintessa the Rogue Creator. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It means a lot and it keeps my channel running. So big fat thank you to you guys. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give a like because it helped the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing.
Thank you.